And I had assumed that this con artist would be the sort of rather cliched idea of a con artist, that he would be quite vain and suave and slick and given the impression of being very moneyed, etc. And then David and me had had these conversations and talked about, you know, everything David was saying there about the desire for reinvention and changing of our situations. And, and then I saw a picture of uh, Mel Weinberg. I'm not sure if Mel is here or not. I saw him earlier this evening. But um, Irv is very, very loosely, and I say that because Mel would punch my lights out if I ever said it actually was Irv, um, uh, very, very loosely based on Mel Weinberg. And the first time I saw his picture, I just went, no way. It was just so fantastic. You know, he had this comb over. He was rather rotund. And, uh, you know, his clothes didn't necessarily fit him perfectly. And it was so not the cliche. And as soon as I saw that, I just said, I can't do it any other way. It's got to be that, you know. There's got to be this sort of rolling momentum to him. And there was a great charm to him as well, which I think was so surprising. And he really is a romantic at heart, you know. And Mel is as well. Mel would hate me for saying it. But Mel really is a romantic at heart as well. And I just felt that all of that fed into the internal uh, side of the character. The thing that I came to like Irv uh, so much for was that he, he's really a romantic, you know, um, uh, especially with two of the characters. Obviously, there's uh, that he completely opens himself up to Sid, to Amy's character, and he reveals himself completely, warts and all, and he's accustomed to people running for the hills when that happens. And once again, he feels like that's happened and he's lonely, but he truly finds a soulmate because she comes back and she says, regardless, you know, I, I want to be with you. And he just loves her endlessly for that, you know, because he can truly share every thought that he has with this woman. And then obviously is heartbroken when she leaves. And then equally with, uh, with Jeremy's character, with, uh, with Carmine, that he turns out to be the only true friend that Earth has ever had in his life. And, um, and he respects him, um, he wants to be more like him, he wants to be altruistic in the way that uh, Carmine is. He adores the way that Carmine will take these shortcuts in order to get there, um, because that's just realistic and he sees the system as being corrupt as well. But again, he knows that he's setting his only friend he's ever had in his life, he's setting him up in a sting, and that just kills him. And so a uh, heart, I, he really does have a heart of gold, you know, despite the fact that you've got this character on the surface is uh, jipping people for thousands of dollars. And that's, uh, that's an awful thing, and that's not sympathetic at all. But I came to really, really like the character, and I hope you guys saw that as well and felt that.